Dear students, in this module, we'll take a, a look at the dynamic programming approaches for predicting the secondary structure of RNA molecules. As you know, the secondary structure of the RNA is formed as a result of hydrogen bonding between the complementary nucleotides that include AU, GC, and sometimes even GU. So these secondary structures are formed once the RNA primary structure, that is the sequence, it folds on to itself and makes these hydrogen bonds. However, there are so many possibilities for the nucleotide couplings that it is difficult to solve this problem computationally. Dynamic programming is an approach that helps us to solve this problem in a very fast and efficient manner. So as I just mentioned, there are four types of nucleotides that comprise the RNA. And as a result of the combinations of these four nucleotides, there are these uh, longer primary sequences which fold back to form the secondary structures. You must know that GC, GU and AU form the hydrogen bonds. Since every sequence in the RNA may have a large number of these four nucleotides, it is possible that there are so many possible combinations. So if there are so many possible combinations that can be formed as a result of these complementary base pairings, then how can we come up with the best solution for the secondary structure prediction? So one way is that we compute all such possibilities. We store it in the memory of the computer and we try to find out by searching which is the most optimal energetically stable structure. But as the length of the RNA molecule increases, the complexity of this problem increases exponentially. So how can we solve this problem using dynamic programming? So what dynamic programming does is that it breaks this very big problem into smaller problems. So it tries to pair the nucleotides two at a time and then tries to see how many combinations are possible across the entire RNA for one specific nucleotide. Now we will see what is the underlying principle of dynamic programming. First, you have to select a nucleotide sequence of the RNA, which in this case is given here below. As you can see, there are many combinations that are possible. For instance, A can make a bond with U, G can bond with C, G can also bond with U, and U can also form a hydrogen bond with G, A can bond with U, and C can form a bond with G. If you think these are all the possible combinations, you are wrong. There are many more possibilities that exist here as well. Let's take a look at them carefully. This U can also bind with this A. Similarly, there can be a hydrogen bond that is formed between these two nucleotides. More so, this G can also form a bond with this C or this G can make a bond with this C and so on and so forth. So as you can see, there are so many possibilities of coupling the complementary nucleotides. So how exactly do we find which set of coupling will give us the best folded RNA? So that is a very difficult question to answer. And for that, we need the help of dynamic programming. In dynamic programming, we begin by listing all possible complementary positions for selected nucleotide in the complete sequence. So let's take a look. So in the example that we are discussing, the first two nucleotides can of course find, uh, form a uh, hydrogen bond and the RNA structure that can be formed 
will have A bonded with U and of course G, C, U, G, U and so on and so forth. In this case there is only one bond that we are considering. Let's take a look at another example. Same sequence but two different nucleotides. So in this case the RNA secondary structure that will be formed will be something like this. A will make a bond with U right? and between A and U you will have three nucleotides U, G and C that remain uncoupled. More so after U you will have G, U, C and so on and so forth this side of the molecule. So already you can form two combinations of this RNA and its secondary structures. Let's take a look at the third form. What if the A, the first A makes a bond with this U? So in this case of course A will be bonded with U U, G, C, U, G will be forming the I of this hairpin and there will be the remaining nucleotides on this side. Dear students, if you note, as we just discussed, there are many other possibilities. For instance, if these two nucleotides were to make a bond as well. What would happen? So you will have another coupling here followed by of course C and G and so on and so forth. So clearly the dynamic programming approach of breaking this problem into individual smaller problems is a good solution and a nice way forward. As I just mentioned that you can consider U and A to make a bond as well as G and C, the underlined nucleotides to make bonds as well. So in this way what dynamic programming does is that it breaks your problem into smaller problems and then exhaustively scans all of these possibilities. So this is how it tries to solve and find the optimal solution. So the important thing is that once you have these many combinations of the nucleotide couplings, then how do you come back to the complete solution? So this process is called the trace back. The trace back takes in all the uh, work that has been done by the algorithm and then uh, it tries to arrive at the secondary structure.